بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. So we continue with our thematic study, the theme of nifaq in the Quran. May Allah perfect our faith and yours and help us flush the nifaq from our lives. Allahumma ameen. And we said on Saturday in our last session together that the very best way to measure if you have the baseline of your faith in terms of practice, something you can hold on to, something you can count, is your prayers, right? And we said if you are sloppy in your salah, that means you could be in very big trouble. That means the flame of your faith is flickering, it's going out and turning back on, it's in critical condition. The second best way to measure, which we will now discuss tonight, is the twin of salah, which is sadaqah, which is sadaqah. Because, you know, these are the twins of faith in the Qur'an, or the twins of practice, right? Yuqimuna salah wa yu'tuna zakah is like dozens of times in the Qur'an, they're paired together. They establish the prayer and they give their charities. They establish the prayer and they give their charities. And so these two are supposed to be like in the believer's DNA, like his spiritual DNA, they're inside. They're inseparable from a true believer. And so to the extent that a person is slow in their sadaqah, they should be concerned about what is the condition of my faith, my iman and the health of my iman. Especially also when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, as burhan, that sadaqah is a burhan. You know, dalil is proof or evidence for something, but dalil could be your evidence. This is why I think X, Y, and Z. Burhan means like a glaring proof, like a, a blinding proof. It is the clearest proof. And so he calls sadaqah one of the clearest proofs, the glaring proofs of your faith is your approach to charity. And you know, in Surah At-Tawbah, which speaks so much about, you know, faith and hypocrisy, that, you know, tug of war that we've been speaking about, Allah Azza wa Jal speaks about the perfect believers, the Sahaba, in a way that's not even praising their, their generosity. He's reassuring them about their concern of not being able to spend more. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا عَلَى الَّذِينَ إِذَا مَا أَتَوْكَ لِتَحْمِلَهُمْ قُلْتَ لَا أَجِدُ مَا أَحْمِلُكُمْ عَلَيْهِ تَوَلَّوْا وَأَعْيُنُهُمْ تَفِيضُ مِنَ الدَّمِّعِ حَزَنًا أَلَّا يَجِدُ مَا يُنْفِقُونَ Tell them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there's no blame on those people who come to you so you can give them an animal to ride on so they can go off into jihad with you. Give them an animal and you tell them, I have nothing to carry you on. I have no more animals. I have no more mounts, no more horses, no more camels. Allah says, and then they walk away from you with their eyes pouring that they couldn't find something to spend for the sake of Allah. They couldn't afford to buy their own animals. They're crying because they couldn't spend. Complete opposite extreme of how the Quran describes the munafiqeen. They say, Allah says these hypocrites, they feel like it's a penalty, like they're being punished that Allah is telling them spend. Or the other ayah says, لا ينفقون إلا وهم كارهون. They don't spend unless they're forced to spend. Unless they're between the rock, a rock and a hard place. And so, الصدقه burhan. This sadaqah is a glaring proof of your faith and your love of Allah, and your love of His message, and your love of His deen, and you want to do it. It's not an obligation for the perfect believer, it is an opportunity, it's a chance, it's something exciting for them. Yes, we love money, that's clear, but because their love for Allah is greater, they're able to keep their greed. We all have greed, it's natural, it's fine. So long as you can keep it in check, and keep the love of Allah supreme over your love of money, which we all have. And also the scholar said, you know, it is a glaring proof of your tawakkul, your trust in Allah Azza wa Jal. Because you know, the more money you have, the more you start assuming, innama utituhu ala ilm, basically. I did it because I earned it. I accomplished it. This is my money. And that is why, even though some people will try to challenge this statistically, uh, that's another topic. But the more money you have, the less percentage of your money you tend to donate. This is actually a phenomenon that can be studied when read the right way. I was reading in uh, some studies that say, no, actually it's not true. The rich spend just as much as the poor out of their money percentage wise. Yeah, of course, when, when you can create tax shelters and create a Gates Foundation or otherwise and start paying yourself through a nonprofit, you can try to argue you pay the same. But 
this is something that should be undeniable to anyone that wants to be careful, right? And just, if you're worried about yourself, you want to be self-critical, the more you have, right, the less you actually spend. So you're, it's as if you, you, your trust in Allah being the provider of all these riches you have now has become blurred. This is why it's a sign of hypocrisy. In that same ayat of Tawbah, Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ عَاهَدَ اللَّهَ لَإِنْ آتَانَا مِنْ فَضْلِهِ لَنَا صَدَّقًا Among these hypocrites are those that they promised Allah if He were just to give us a little bit more money, we're going to spend. Right? The next ayah, فَلَمَّا آتَاهُمْ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ بَخِلُوا بِهِ And then when He gives them from His bounty, they get an upgrade in their income, they start holding back, holding, they become stingy. The greed gets translated into stinginess and action now. Greed is natural. Stinginess is unacceptable. It's not for the believer, right? They become stingy. So the third ayah says, فَأَعْقَبَهُمْ That's the ayah we began with four lessons ago. فَأَعْقَبَهُمْ نِفَاقًا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ Allah punished them by causing their hearts to be plagued with nifaq, with hypocrisy, with that blurriness in their trust in Allah that He is the provider due to the promise they broke with Allah. That if you give me, I'm going to spend more. Most people don't do this, right? Of course, the, the golden million dollar question is how much should I be spending? Are you saying I have to spend everything? Are you saying I can't plan ahead for my investments? I can't plan to invest in my child's education and put out a college fund? What do you mean exactly? That's a big question and there's so many variables that I will not be able to get through them tonight. But I'm not telling you to be like Abu Darda radiallahu anhu. You know Abu Darda when they entered his house, they, they, they said to him like, where's the furniture? And he said, I have another house that I'm building. They said, yeah, but while you're here, you're going to need some furniture. He said, no, no, the landlord's not going to leave me here for a long time. I'm on my way out. <laughs> I'm not telling you that. I swear, if you come to my house, you're going to find couches. You're going to find plants. There's paintings on the wall. <laughs> I, I'm not saying this is necessary, right? And that perfect ideal may be an ideal for only certain places and times, right? Or, you know, there's another beautiful incident I'll mention quickly uh, that one of the great scholars of Islam, a visitor journeying through the lands of Islam, entered his house and uh, he said to him, basically, where's your furniture? He just saw a very basic, you know, rug and little mat and his books. He said, where's the furniture? He said, where's your furniture? He said, what are you talking about? I'm a visitor. He said, so am I. <laughs> I'm a visitor too, right? This is a beautiful mentality, a beautiful state of mind and heart. But it may not necessarily be perfectly ideal for us here, though we can never claim to have those hearts, even if it was the ideal. But at the same time, this is what I do want to say. For you to not hesitate in spending when Allah calls you to spend, for His sake, it is more than just your zakah. And zakah is a big topic. Are we sure we're paying our zakah on time? on all of the assets that Allah required us, do we study this or not? Are we putting off our hajj when we could be making hajj, right? Even though I have the money, is Islam an afterthought? Am I investing properly, whether it's through masjid or Islamic school or private tutoring, am I investing enough to make sure my children have enough background knowledge, literacy on what Islam is and what Islam isn't, right? Am I making sure I am not cutting corners and just saying it's fine, it's 2022, using riba-based investments, right? They save us money anyway. All of those are difficult questions. They are difficult questions, but they are part of our iman. Because everything you spend for the sake of Allah, whether it's obligatory or whether it's voluntary, this is called sadaqah. And it proves the sidq of our faith. May Allah make us and you of the sadiqeen of the truthful in our faith and continue to help us to flush whatever remnants or signs of hypocrisy may creep in. Allahumma ameen.